cloud computing. As you know that uh, you know, cloud computing is becoming one of the very common thing in our life nowadays. It doesn't matter, you know, what we are, we are doing in our, you know, current scenario. In some way, you are using some service provided by the cloud. So, but there is, you know, two kind of thing to understand that in our personal life, or that means for our personal purpose, we use some kind of cloud, and that risks involved with that is, you know, at the personal level, and another is. You know, when your organization and where you are working, that is going to move to cloud for different cloud-based services. Right. So they are having you know different uh, kind of risk because you know, when it is uh, organizational data, mainly bulk data will be there. Then uh, an availability matters at that time, right? So many things are there. You know, when you are uh, as an organization going to move to cloud. Okay, so what is cloud computing? <laughs> so it is a paradigm of for enabling network access to scalable and elastic pool of shareable physical or virtual resources with self service provisioning and administration on demand. So, what it is, it is just enabling some you know, network access. Scalable and elastic pool of shareable. What are the shareable things are there? Physical or virtual resources, you know, computer resources. Okay. With self service provisioning, that means who is uh, availing the service, that service will be in the form of, you know, in a way of self service manner, like, you know, when you access email. So no one comes to you know assist us. Just um, self registration and self service. How to maintain your inbox, your signature, and everything, right? And administration on demand. Okay. So some of the example of uh, cloud services nowadays you are using, like email services, blog and tweets, e-commerce, search engines. Photos, videos, social engineering, music, e government. So, all that are uh, an example of some kind of uh, cloud based applications. Okay. So, what do we mean by cloud? Uh, in real life, you know what cloud means. But if you see technically, and it is made up of massive data centers of concrete and steel. So you can see these areas. So this is, uh, you can say, the physical location of a cloud. And if you enter into this, what you will find, it is massive data center. That means filled with thousands of rows of servers, racks, and housing customer data. Customer data means whoever enabling the service, their data is also going to be stored into all these you know racks and you know, racks of servers okay you can understand you know, what will be what it will be look like if you enter in a cloud data center or in a physical cloud hosting center now what is the characteristic of cloud computing first one is network access to cloud services First of all, that is you can understand that once you have given or put your data on the cloud, network access becomes very essential for us at the time. If you don't have network access, as your data and your resources are not uh, offline with you, you can't access them. So then, the only what you need from a measured service, right? That means. Uh, in offline life, if you think about purchasing some memory and you decide to purchase a one terabyte hard disk, so you have to pay for one terabyte at a time. But uh, if you are taking, uh, you need to say 5 GB of space and you want to purchase it from the cloud, so you don't need to pay uh, for one terabyte at a time. 
to purchase for 5 GB, you know, initially, and when after one or two years, the requirement will be increased, and then you can uh, purchase you know, another 5 GB or 10 GB of memory. Okay, so it is basically major disservice, and uh, you have people or customer pay only what they need from the service provider. Then multi tenancy. Okay, many customer in same space. Then on demand self service to scalable resources and high bandwidth link to and between data set, data centers okay. <clears throat> then business and government in the cloud if you see uh, why they the business and government moves to the cloud first one is productivity it how it increases the pro productivity because it makes uh, the access to the resource and data, uh, you know, uh, you can say ubiquitous. So wherever your employee doesn't matter, uh, your employee can access the uh, and resources from anywhere uh, as it is on cloud, and they can work anytime and can increase the productivity. Then lower cost because uh, you know many in many ways the cost is going to be minimized when uh, an organization moves to cloud. Like you know. If, if you have you have a small organization, a small enterprise, and you are going to uh, uh, you know host your own servers in uh, your uh, personal office, then you have to recruit many manpower to maintain these parts you know, uh, servers, as well as uh, you know power supply is another issue in the uh, you know in premises uh, infrastructure. But uh, when uh, you know it goes on onto the cloud, what happens? So many customers uh, like you, uh, like you know, small enterprises and other big enterprises are their customer and all their services are maintained in a single place. So they need only few people to maintain, uh, you know, these uh, resources. So the, uh, definitely lower is the cost and new services, like you know, any new services comes uh, and uh, on cloud it can be available immediately. But in in premises, you know, you need the expertise for installing them, the services, and uh, you know many other things. People to learn how to do work with them. But on cloud, it is most you know, more easier. So here you can see worldwide uh, the public service, you know, in a global reach. You can see you know most worldwide everywhere these green dots are there. If you look at uh, private cloud. So it is basically installed by a particular organization for their own use, you can say. So it may be managed by that organization or by a cloud service provider. Okay, next is hybrid. So public or private environments remain unique entities but are bound together with on-premises ICT by common technology that enables uh, data and application uh, for uh, portability. Understand? So, with hybrid basically it uh, it is having both the services uh, in a single place. Uh, some of the private uh, hostings are there as well as some public hostings are also, also there. Okay. So, and, and if you see fully public hostings or public uh, cloud, they are basically multi tenant en environments in which cloud service providers own and make available to all general public there okay then cloud infrastructure including storage and applications comes under this right so this service model i have already told you so i will give you a little bit detail of this um, if you see infrastructure as a service so it gets the you know the customer gets only the basic computer uh, you know, computer you can say and network and storage resources so you can see here see here only uh, no software resources are going to be provided to the uh, you know, customer okay so on demand service will be provided like you know, amazon ec2 you know it is quite common among students i think you also some of you have also used amazon ec2 in vmware vcloud and all these things you know kind of uh, services will be provided in infrastructure as a service next come platform as a service so what is this on-demand application hosting environment 
Tak jak na Google App Engine, Sales, sales salesforce.com then windows azure so what happens in this now when it gives platform as a service it gives the hardware and on the hardware some an operating system is available and where uh, people can install or the customer can install required softwares okay so that is called platform as a service that means uh, it is kind of uh, you know when you purchase a new laptop without any you know uh, installed software but operating system is there now you can install new software on it it is look like that okay then comes software as a service at this uh, point the cloud applications uh, are available like you know, software so application software are available as a service like google app we use then microsoft you know, office 365 we use so all these are kind of an you know, application software uh, we use as a service okay so three deployment model i have already told you so now cloud computing and cyber crime now concerns about uh, privacy and security in cloud if you see uh, first one is uh, the security, security and privacy is the topmost concern in cloud adoption decision okay so definitely you can understand the when uh, Person comes of adoption of cloud, you know, addition of adoption of cloud. Many questions, you know, questions regarding security and privacy comes first. Okay, so whenever you know, when we will work in any of the organization after your course, we will find that uh, you know you are working in a you know organization or enterprise where it is already. Uh, you know adopted cloud or it is thinking of adopting cloud so this, this is the current scenario general scenario okay so international data corporation like idc report of october 2008 security concern was the most serious barrier to cloud adoption so can this is the most serious barrier so you know people was not adopting cloud only you know thinking about uh, the security concerns right then IPC pool, IDC pool, April 2010, if you see, less than 10% of respondents confident about cloud security measures. Then the Harris Interactive Survey for, you know, for a novel in October 2010, you can see 90% concerned about cloud security, 50% are security concern, primary barrier to cloud adoption 76 percent private data more secure when stored on the premises that means in the organization's office okay and 81 percent believes that worried about worried about regulatory uh, compliance so a commonplace uh, observation is uh, you can see cloud providers offer sophisticated service but have Weak performance in public, sorry, in policies and practices related to privacy and security. Okay. So, cloud is largely nascent technology. So, you can understand, so it, you know, security and privacy is a big issue when we think about moving to cloud. Okay. Some observations are like, you know, cloud will make uh, Healthcare 2.0 and banking 2.0 and education 2.0 uh, realities, especially in developing countries. So it is a you know, 2008 uh, prediction, and uh, now we are already uh, done it. You can see nowadays the healthcare, uh, banking, you know, education, everything is running based on cloud. Even we are you know um, using the uh, this cloud service for online classes. So. Cyber criminals uh, perspective, if you see opportunity for online criminal practices to upgrade to cyber crime 2.0. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> so with all these upgradation, the cyber crime criminals are also going to upgrade themselves definitely. Then clouds diffusion and that of social media have superimposed onto organization rapid digitization in a complex manner that allow cyber criminals and cyber effunoise networks to exploit the 
clouds weaknesses. Institutional factors affecting security or privacy in cloud are like uh, cloud related uh, legal system enforcement uh, mechanism evolving slowly like you know legislation is uh, jurisdictions of the users and providers yes okay or the data location is govern the protection of the data then overhead by the law and enforcement uh, overreach by the law and uh, enforcement agencies how because you know when your data is uh, on the cloud then it is not always in your uh, you know in your control if you know some you know, some offenses happens in the company or organization the law and enforcement agencies need not to come to the office premises to collect the data or check out what is going on they will simply go to the cloud service provider and uh, with a you know, court uh, you can say order and the cloud service provider without the customer's consent may provide the data so that is a big uh, uh, thing you know uh, related to cloud then professional associations like you know emerging and influencing security and privacy issues then industry standard organizations like you know address some some concerns so then concerns about dependency on cloud vendors security assurance and practices they are another concern then cloud users inertia effects <laughs> technology and factors uh, other you know, related to uh, security and privacy you see the cloud's newness and unique vulnerability is the big thing you know, so even uh, today cloud is evolving and you know lots of new services are coming so they are new Okay, so this is a, this is the you know thing you know newness in the cloud all the time new things are uh, you know evolving there and uh, you know unique vulnerabilities also you know that means this, this vulnerability is you know comes with this uh, new technology are never seen before kind of thing so uh, you know these vulnerabilities can be you know most of the time uh, um, the attacker can find those vulnerabilities and uh, they can exploit it and, attractiveness and vulnerabilities of the cloud as cyber crime target so definitely and then value of the data on the cloud and criminal control cloud so there is the first thing the value of the data the huge you know if some attacker can uh, log in or can get access to some cloud they gets a huge amount of data and there is some cloud uh, services which are controlled by criminals okay so this is another you know the threat the nature of the architecture if you see mm, virtual and dynamic architecture and sophistication and complexity of the architecture matters uh, and you can say issues for security implementation right then cloud newness and unique vulnerabilities if you see it is evolving and popularity of virtualization technology like like you know comes up with uh, new bugs the vulnerabilities and security issues are uh, polyp proliferating and this then cloud unfamiliar uh, terrain for security companies uh, you know for the security companies also it is kind of unfamiliar terrain new uh, new issues are coming uh, you know so this is one thing then lack of mechanisms to guarantee security and privacy and uncomfortable reality for cloud providers so definitely so because you know for cloud the, the, the really they have some you know different uh, security i can say infrastructure as compared to normal security infrastructure we use okay so rarely they have hardly they have it and so that is another issue they usually don't uh, you know, people or customers don't get uh, enough satisfaction with uh, you know security issues of cloud then dawkins you know rare enough enemy syndrome what is this a helpful theoretical perspective uh, you know victims often fall to new unfamiliar 
baits are allowed, then the enemy's manipulation is so rare that evolutionary development has not yet pro progressed to the point that the victim has an effective counter uh, poison. Then the problem is that a user may be able to access to the provider sensitive uh, portions of infrastructure as well as uh, resources of other users. In, in August 2010, if you see the US National Institute of NIST basically, NIST announces the a vulnerability that is a user can cross from one client environment to other client environment managed by the same cloud provider. So this is, you know, very, very, you can say, dangerous that one, is a two, there is a cloud resource storage there. You know, uh, here you can say, one user uh, using it and another user is also using it and there is a partition. But if it happens that uh, this user one can access this part and uh, with some trick, they can access the other part also, then it is, you know, uh, a big security flaw. But nowadays it is not possible because virtualization becomes so mature nowadays. Okay. Then forensically challenging, challenging in the case of data breach, like you know, some public cloud systems may store and process data in different uh, jurisdiction and different laws. And some organization may encrypt data before storing. <coughs> so, uh, you know, why you know, things are there that uh, with this, that uh, you know, different government and other guidelines are there. So, always uh, it is not possible to encrypt your data before storing to cloud. That is another issue. Okay. So, attractiveness or, you know, of the vulnerability as the cyber crime target, if you see the value of the data in the cloud is one of the biggest thing, right? So target uh, effectiveness <laughs> is a function of uh, perceptions of victims, right? So monetary or uh, symbolic value of probability and then accessibility and visibility is of physical access and lack of surveillance are the you know, as a reason of it. Then large companies network offers more targets like you know, cloud suppliers bigger than the client, you know, more attractive target because this, this kind of target can, you know, can compromise many customers at a time. So they are you know, more attractive targets. Then it offers a high you know, then surface area of attack. Then one Fear is that IP and other uh, sensitive information stored, the cloud could be stolen and cloud providers may not be notified their clients. So this is another thing that say you have kept your data on the cloud and it is stolen from there. And it happens to you know, happen that uh, the cloud provider uh, you know, are not going to inform the customer that your data was stolen and due to that, you know, if your data is stolen and if you realize it, then you can take some preventive measure. But if you, the cloud provider is not informing uh, the customer, then how they can take some preventive measure or corrective measure. Then uh, underreporting of cyber crimes is another thing because you know re reason of underreporting is like embarrassment, uh, credibility and reputation damage of the organization and stock price drop. All these things are the different reasons. Right. Some other are like, you know, Google discovered a China organized attack on its cloud infrastructure in 2009. The attack was part of larger operation which filtered infrastructure of at least 20 other large companies. Then information stored in cloud are potential <laughs> gold mine for cyber criminals. Early 2010, you know, LA University postponed plan to move to you know, webmail server to Google app and tailored for students and faculty. 
now you can see that many of the organizations uh, you know they use google app uh, for you know the services the reason is that google size and you know visibility makes it more uh, susceptible to cyber attacks but nowadays uh, you know that uh, how secure uh, google have made their servers but uh, still uh, there is no ultimate uh, you know security uh, you can say <laughs> that uh, uh, and, uh, some ultimate security which can deep um, uh, defeat any kind of attack it is uh, there is no guarantee of that okay then criminal controlled clouds are there so the cloud is potentially most uh, vulnerable you know viewed against the backdrops of criminal on clouds operating in parallel then diamond is uh, is the only material hard enough to fire diamond efficiently so criminal on clouds may be employed to effectively steal data stored in clouds and cloud may provide the many of the same benefit to criminals as the legitimate business right so like uh, there are some criminal uh, and for their uh, you know um, crime they need the use uh, some good amount of computer resources but uh, even uh, you know as the clouds are there so they don't need to make physical infrastructure anywhere they don't need to purchase servers and all simply they can purchase some cloud service and use for their crime so that is another thing can happen right then Configure virus is one of the virus that is the you know, most visible example of uh, criminal on cloud. Arguably, the world's biggest cloud was this one, and controls seven million computer systems and 230 regional and country top level domains was there available with them, and bandwidth capacity of 28 terabyte per second uh, they had. then largest footprint of resource like uh, you know spread malware to come uh, to control more computers and less active recently but still it is a threat okay so last, uh, last major uh, configure attack was in april 2009 and last reported attack was in february 2010 now configure you know bad thing you can see here configure is also available on for rent the criminal can choose a location they want to rent the configure cloud okay pay according to the bandwidth they want then choose the operating system the customer have a range of option for the type of services to put you know in the configure like you know And the attacker, if the attacker wants to launch a denial of service attack, they can use the configure cloud. Then spreading malware, sending spam, data exfiltration. So all these things can be, you know, done using the configure cloud. Okay, so the configure is a cloud which is maintained by the criminal people, and they give uh, their resources, their cloud, um, for doing all these kind of. Uh, no illegal or um, crimes okay then uh, <coughs> the cloud uh, as the ultimate spying machine you can see here that uh, um, cloud fnois 2.0 is here for the government to spy on the citizen because you know uh, google reports that government request for private information and to censor its application so you can understand that uh, Google itself saying that government request for the private information of the public. Okay. In February 2010, a report of shadow network that target India Ministry of Defence, the UN, the office of the Dalai Lama. The report noted that cloud provide uh, you know, criminals and FNOs network with convenient cover. Fire defenses and uh, redundancy, cheap hosting, and conveniently distributed command and control architecture. Okay. So, atmosphere of uh, suspicion or distrust 
among the states like US China trade and investment policy relationship. <laughs> so you can understand that you know, there is many other um, things you know, and uh, important things uh, related to uh, cloud, uh, the, you know, mainly the spying over it. Now, threat to cloud, or if you see here, first one is crypto, crypto jacking. What is this? Uh, you know, you have a crypto jacking script, so it is a you know, malicious script, and this crypto jacking script are going to be, you know, sent to some server, and if it get executed on the server, then the web server are going to be compromised, right? So now, if some computer is going to access this compromised website, then the user device gets you know, gets this uh, you know hacked by this hacker or by this crypto jacking script, and crypto mining malware can be installed on the user computer. Then, using this user's computer, uh, the attacker can mine cryptocurrency. Then data breaches, if you see in, in the last two years, average cost of breach is you know 3.86 million dollar in 2020 and 3.92 million dollar in 2019. Then average time to identify and contain, if you see, in 2020, 280 days it uh, you know was the average time to identify. Uh, Data breach in 2019, it is 279 days. So you can understand once the data breach happens, to identify it, it takes this much time. So, how you know insecure and you can see vulnerabilities uh, you know, are there. Uh, then the security automation deployed you know, in 2020, 59% of the organization and 52% of the organization since uh, 2019. Now, question is that you know the these organizations are you, know, you can say somewhat uh, secure, but remaining organization you know small companies, what about them? They are still vulnerable, right? Then, uh, highest average cost uh, industry for C healthcare and uh, they are also healthcare. So healthcare is the industry where you know, which uh, loses the highest uh, amount of dollar uh, in each year. Then threat to the cloud, if you see the biggest one is uh, denial of service. We all know how, how the denial of service happens. So this is saying your cloud, okay, Ta uh, target server. So cloud are basically kind of servers. Okay, now here is a hacker you can see. Now this hacker uses command and control with this, uh, you know, PCs and this PCs can control and you know, other uh, layers of uh, numerous number of PCs. And computing devices. Now, all these devices send requests to the server simultaneously at a time. So, what happens? This cyber, this uh, server, have some you know buffer to you know, to re take all the requests and uh, process them one by one. Now, when this buffer gets totally filled up, if this server gets you know hand, okay. Uh, this server just get busy to resolve all this request and due to that it may happen that the legitimate users are not going to get the um, real service for which the server is deployed okay. then inside that thread like you know some employee who are you can say careless or who can uh, compromise their credential is there with some people who can uh, use the resource so, and for criminal activity is another thing. Then hijacking account is another thing like, you know, the username and ID and password can be, uh, you know, hijacked by information leakage and the attacker can collect it and use it to you know, log into some other's account. Okay. Then insecure applications, there is many applications on the cloud, you know, then when you are installing application to your you know, app, you need to be concerned. Like you know, if you say if when you are using Google Doc or you know, Google Sheets, there is there are many add-ons applications. Now when you are uh, if you see at these add-ons, they are not provided by Google, but they are developed by some 
third party, okay? And we never heard their name. The question is that uh, before downloading such uh, add-on for you know any of the uh, application, the cloud-based application, you must uh, you know recheck that whether they are secure or they have some sec um, security flaws or not. Okay. Then inadequate training of the you know employees can lead to some security attack. So the <coughs> Uh, they, if they don't understand what is security, how to maintain it, uh, how to you know, access the resources, and how to make, keep the secrecy, okay, so then it is going to be, you know, uh, going to lead to some, you know, some engineering attack or some other kind of attacks or data losses. Then finally, too simplistic to view the cloud as a